Hey, I wanted to tell you about something that you're going to see in your email inbox here in the next few days, and we will put a link to this in the a description of today's podcast. But we are giving you a chance to give us some feedback about uh, the podcast. We want to know um, how we can better meet your needs, the things that you're looking for, uh, the things that you want from this podcast. When you listen or when you watch, what are you after? And so there's a link to a survey uh, in the comment section or in the description here of this podcast. You also get one in your email inbox. We would like to hear from you to tell us a little bit about what you think, how often you listen, what are you listening for, and how we can make this better. Please give us that feedback. And we'll do our best to shape this into the exact tool that you need to help improve your walk with Christ. Hey, everyone. Welcome to today's edition of One Single Story, where each weekday we offer a brief lesson from a section of today's reading. Then we examine a single relevant question that passage points us to. Today, I'm joined by Jay Ravenbart. We're looking at a passage from Leviticus chapter 6. Um, chapters 1 through 5 have already covered the very sacrifices and the occasions that they should be offered. But it seems like chapter six and seven deal with the same subject. So why, why do they repeat it or why does it feel like they're being repeated? So chapters one through five um, are addressed to the ordinary individual. The instructions begin with phrases like uh, if any man sins and ordinary men would be interested interested in occasions when sacrifices would need to be offered and what kind of an animal uh, would be required of them if they had to to make a sacrifice. Um, The sacrifices seem to be arranged in some type of theological order, emphasizing the purpose behind each sacrifice. Um, Chapters 6 and 7, though, are addressed to priests. Um, These chapters speak more about the ritual of sacrifice and how the animals should be offered correctly. Um, The sacrifices are arranged here by the frequency that they are offered, beginning with uh, daily sacrifices and then moving to less frequent purification offerings. And um, there's no hard, fast division between the sections of Leviticus. The the portions of these chapters that are addressed to priests are to the priest and others that are addressed to ordinary men. It's, it's, It's possible the material was written on separate occasions, and then later it may have been compiled by Moses. Um, the, the Levitical law lays out the precision about how sacrifices should be offered, uh, when the sacrifices should be offered, and which animals are appropriate. Um, so how do we apply this information in modern day world if we do that? So one, um, one application um, is to consider how precise God's law is is concerning dealing with sin through sacrifices. Uh, The rules are very specific. If nothing else, such specific regulation stresses the importance of sin and the seriousness of the holiness of God. And and churches also have different personalities and rituals. Such etiquette displays respect and seriousness uh, relating to God. So church rituals that display God as approachable might fail to recognize the fear of the Lord or the holiness of God. Conversely, uh, church rituals that display God as distant or untouchable can fail to recognize God's love, mercy, and forgiveness. But both God's love and his holiness have to be kept in the proper perspective. So, Jay, how do um, some church rituals portray God as distant and untouchable? What are some ways that, that God might be presented as untouchable? One of the dangers in, in some quote, churches, religions, is that the focus becomes on a person, whether that be priest or some other form of deity that they look to, uh, they even some may even pray to or mm-hmm. confess to. Uh, and so that very practice, at least in my mind, portrays God as distant and, and untouchable in the sense it's not personal any longer. Um You know, I think it's important to remember Scripture teaches very clearly personal accountability to God. Therefore, there should be a personal relationship to Him. And it would be very easy to get caught up in practices and rituals and routines that make God um, a a distant um, entity and 
again, lacking the personal relationship um, and connectivity. Um, I think it was David over and over in the Psalms when he had an issue, and oftentimes he confessed. He said, God, I've sinned against you. Um, you know, the reality is when we sin, we sin in whatever area it is, but ultimately we sin to God, and he's a personal God. And so, you know, there are lots of things in place that can keep him distant from us. So what what might be some church rituals that portray God as approachable but lenient? You got the opposite side of that equation in coin where perhaps maybe in an environment where where quote grace and love is is all that's emphasized and the the judgment of God um, is is not emphasized or ever emphasized uh, where accountability isn't uh, ever taught. And so it just becomes about, you know, in my mind's eye, I see everybody sitting around a campfire linked arm in arm singing Kumbaya and everything's loving because we all love God because he's a loving God. Right. He is a loving God, but he's a righteous, holy God who uh, demands justice and, and righteousness. Um, and so I think the danger always presented to any believer and group of believers is to go too far one way or the other, that there has to be a healthy balance. I have commented before here that one of the dangers of more casual atmospheres Mm -hmm. is we take God too casually, Mm -hmm. right? Um, It's not that... I would even say in most environments, where love and grace are emphasized. It's not that they're teaching something that's wrong. It's that we talked about yesterday, that omission. They're leaving out an important Mm -hmm. piece of the puzzle. And, you know, I've been in, I've been to both environments. You know, I was thinking, um, you know, I've been in some, I've been to Catholic churches and I often, when I travel, I'll find myself going in as a tourist to look at, because they have some incredible Mm -hmm. facilities. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, confessions done in a booth to a man, right? Uh, prayers are done to other saints right. who have gone before, not to not to necessarily to God Himself. Uh, but in in a more casual environment, how we dress, um, how we act, mm-hmm. right? You know, um. There are, like, for example, I will see people, and occasionally I'll say it, right? I, 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 it's been a long time since I've said it, but, like, if you need to get up and go out, do it in the first 15 minutes of my mm-hmm. message. The worst time that you can get up and go out is, like, the last yeah. five minutes. You know, when I'm trying to close it down and mm-hmm. I'm going to make an appeal for salvation. Right. But sometimes, and you know, there was a there was a, a young man, and I bet for four years, this it was the same way every Sunday. About 10 minutes from the close of my sermon, mm. he'd get up, go out, get a cup of coffee, and come back in carrying that cup of coffee. At the same time, it's like, wow. what, what is it yeah. right here that, that you want to do that? And it, but it's not that, okay, you got to be seated and be reverent. You Mm -hmm. can't do anything. It's just, you've got to be aware of how God is working, how the Holy Spirit, it doesn't mean God can't, the the Holy Spirit isn't still working in spite of, you know, somebody getting up. It's just, sometimes I don't think we pay attention to it. And we don't, we probably don't make enough at times in, in, in more contemporary setting, casual setting churches of, the judgment of God that is coming, right? You've got to you got to be aware of it. Sure. Um, why why is it important to have both that grace and truth, um, the love and holiness? Why is it important to have both? And and how maybe maybe how do they get out of balance? They're important because they're both taught. You know, they're they're both attributes of God, and to. To stress one and leave out the other is, is dangerous, and to go to the extreme the other way. I mean, could you think about going to an environment where 
nothing you do is right. You're never going to get anything right. You're 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 worthless. I feel like that growing up. Sometimes. And well, and that's what I'm saying. And you know, you you can't even rely on on the love of God in the sense of because you may have as as we talked about previous podcast, you may have had some un, unintentional or unaware sin, you know, that came into play that would negate everything you you've tried right. to 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 work out with him. That's an issue in and of itself. And so one both of them are attributes of God, love, grace, mercy, forgiveness, restoration, all those. But so is judgment and anger and dealing with sin. And so if you're going to get a true picture of who God is, you have to have some uh, balance of those elements to really understand who He is. I don't think you can even begin to appreciate the love and grace that so many lean on and emphasize without understanding the judgment. Yeah, why do you need it? Exactly right. What yeah. is the point of all this if you don't know about this? Right. And if you focus only on this, then you you bypass all the benefits of this side. Right. In any relationship where one thing is overly emphasized, mm-hmm. it's going to get out of balance. Yes. And anything that's out of balance... It's going to have problems, you know, yes. a tire that gets out mm-hmm. of balance on your car. Like, I passed by a car yesterday. Like, I don't even know how they were riding it. Yeah. Boom, 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 yeah. Boom, boom. And I was like, Come, can y'all not yeah. hear that? Like, go yeah. go get your tire balance. I right. saw one like that recently. I mean, you could see it a uh, half a mile away just in, and <laughs> rode by and looked. They were just as happy as they yeah, could no, they're clueless. I think they right. were. I think you could hear based on the music. I think they were drowning it out <laughs> with music. So they were stretching from one extreme to, to counterbalance the out of balance. Right. That, that's exactly right. Yes. Which, and we do which, that. Yeah, but in that case, had an effect on their ears. Mm-hmm. Right. Because yeah. you listen to it for too long, mm-hmm. it you, you you go deaf. But it's also having an effect on your car. You know, an out of balance. Uh, tire yeah it, it's going to affect your <laughs> gas mileage um, you know it, it's it, what is it <laughs> i don't know if i should tell this story or not uh i got in i got in a we'll vehicle. decide I got, tell it yeah. <laughs> right daniel I, let I, me be the judge I, of that. I got in a vehicle uh to come to to a church one sunday morning i'll put it that way and got in a vehicle that belonged to somebody kid to me. <laughs> and I'm going down the road. I mean, mile from the house, and all of a sudden, the, the steering wheel's going to, like this. And I'm like, what in the world? And I said, how long has this been going on? And the response was something like, not all that long. <laughs> I, and I'm like, so you never said anything? You never addressed the issue? I mean, it's not going away. And so for one person, it was, okay, I recognize there's something going on here, but that's that's not an area that I'm I'm willing to put time, effort, energy. It's right. not that important to it. me. Mm-hmm. And for me, it was the first thing I noticed. All I can think about, you know, and getting getting it fixed. And oftentimes, I think that's the way with us in general that some things are problematic to some people, and some notice things right away, right, and recognize they need to be dealt with. Yeah, you know, there there would be. I'm not a mechanic, but I want a car to ride smooth, mm-hmm. and I want it when it, when I hit the switch, I want it to turn on. Yeah, right. You for know, sure. I, don't, I don't want the starter going. Rum, 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 rum. Yeah, you know, I, 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 there are things there are things I expect, but there I, there are people who don't. Absolutely, they they, they just don't. Sometimes that frustrates me, mm-hmm. right? But the other side of that is I also know I frustrate people mm. because there are probably some things that sure. I don't care about and don't pay as much attention to. Yeah. Good. Well, thank you for joining us today on this edition of One Single Story. We hope you'll be back with us tomorrow as we continue a conversation around the book of Leviticus. Mm-hmm.